All right, since it's a new year, it's a good time to talk about uh, planning. And basically, I, I talked talked about this already a year ago, about how do you annual planning the right way. But anyway, I mean, it's always a good time. Uh, uh, it, I mean, this is a time to do planning right now. And uh, I have actually tweaked some of the things that uh, since I presented last time, but uh, it's... Uh, the point is that often planning can feel really like a heavy, heavy burden, but that's not the thing. I mean, that's not the purpose at all, because whatever plans we have, the plan is not cast in stone, because point is not the plan itself. It's the point is, point is actually about planning itself, because once we do planning, we will actually gather more data and have better understanding about what are, what are the things that, first of all, we want to achieve, and then secondly, how, how do we get there? So let's talk about annual planning the right way. And um, I mean, many people have said, Bill Gates including, that most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And that is so spot on. So some of the most common mistakes when doing this uh, annual planning or any kind of plan is that you are that we make too big, too detailed, even, maybe even too like task level plans and maybe even reach it or <laughs> maybe just plain crazy plans. So another point is that maybe you don't really understand what getting to the end result really requires. So we have a plan, we have a nice vision and all that stuff and maybe have specific steps to, uh, I mean, like milestones, but we we still lack the understanding what it will really require in order to get there. For example, if you want to have a million dollars in sales, uh, let's say, say that we sell our product for 10 bucks, then it means that we need to sell like 1 million products. And if the cost of the uh, goods sold, so I mean, is $3 per unit, then during the year, we would need to invest like $3 million in inventory. So if, if that is our goal and uh, that, that, that's our target, then, I mean, do we have access to this amount that we can invest in inventory? If not, then it doesn't really make sense, right? Then one common mistake is that, uh, I mean, I'm sure all of us have been uh, there and uh, I know that I have definitely be, have been guilty of this. So pretty much like losing focus, getting lost in the details, or just, I mean, just doing too many things at the same time. So whatever plan you have, maybe it kind of gets pointless. And this is part of the being uh, making too rich plan. It's not really accounting and adapting to change because uh, I mean, let's face it, <laughs> life seldom goes the way that you plan it. So we need to have a we need to have a system that is able to adapt to change. And here's a good uh, graph about uh, where the x-axis is time and the y is uncertainty. So this is typically used in different IT projects, but I mean, this is very like uh, accurate for other kinds of projects as well, besides just IT. So in the beginning, when we start a project, then the amount of uncertainty is the biggest. And when we actually start uh, working on the project, when we start gathering more data, then uncertainty goes uh, lower and lower because we are gathering data, we are realizing what it actually takes to finish this project. So the area here indicates that what we don't know and during time it will just go lower and lower and well, by when we actually finish the project then that's the time that basically there's no uncertainty about anymore because I mean the project is done, it's completed and there's nothing else to do for this project in question. So let's talk about the process for uh, annual planning. First of all, I mean, we need to define where do we want to get? Because if you don't know where we are 
going then i mean how how are we supposed to know when we get there it's the same thing like you go to a taxi and the taxi driver asks okay where do you want to go and you just say i don't know i have no idea where to, where i want to go then second step is really define okay what it really looks like then third step is having some kind of pathway how do we achieve it and step number four is tracking so it's nice to do plans it's nice to it's nice to do uh, planning and it's nice to uh, write out different kind of milestones visions or whatever we want to have but if we don't track it I mean, then it's pretty pointless because then we have no idea are we on the right track or not. So step number one. So define where we want to get. So if, if you are, make, whenever you're making a plan, we you need to be uh, knowledgeable of, about, okay, where do you want to get? What do you want to achieve? So question here is when you're doing annual planning is that, okay, fine. Like, where do I want to be after one year from now? And let's be realistic because one year is, it's only 12 months or 52 weeks or 365 days <laughs> or less than 9,000 hours. So it, it's not really that much, is it? And um, if we consider about work time, productive time, I mean, work time uh, per person, it's, I mean, if you work like 40 hours per week, then that means that it's less than 2000 hours. So one year might seem like a long time, but um, if you work every single week for 40 hours, then it's still less than uh, 2000 hours. And here, here, well, here we are talking uh, like work hours. It's a completely different thing, like productivity. So I mean, maybe the real productivity is like for only four hours per day at maximum, like per person. So then it's I mean it's less than thousand hours. It's like nine hundred sixty hours, and this doesn't account for any kind of like holidays. Like in Finland, there's long summer vacation for like winter vacation and all that stuff. So this is not even accounting for that. So if we are saying that, okay, uh, what are the things that we need to achieve uh, like personally in one year? I mean, I, I, I only have like less than thousand hours to do it. And uh, this, this is basically per person. So, I mean, let, the way we can increase this amount of hours is we have more people. So if it's not only me who's working on the business, so if I have a business partner, team and so on, I mean, then we can actually uh, like increase this number. But if it's just for me personally, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's the number at maximum. So the question is that, like, okay, after one year from now, how does the end result look like? And it's good to consider that, okay, what are the market trends and problems and issues and all that stuff. And it's especially true if you're doing uh, any kind of like, for example, investing, investing thing, but uh, it pretty much applies to like selling physical products on Amazon too, because you, you, we should consider that, okay, what are the trends that are happening uh, in the next 12 months? And are there any kind of issues that uh, we could foresee? Like, le le let's uh, consider last year. I mean, last year there was uh, huge issues in, in terms of logistics in, do in doing shipments. And it actually impacted maturity of the of, of sellers on Amazon. So when if we know that we are going to be having some issues in uh, in logistics then what, what what can we actually do in order to uh, mitigate that risk and prevent from uh, getting out of stock and so on so i mean what, what are the different opportunities and threats in the next 12 months so it's definitely worthwhile to consider this but anyway i mean at the end of the year let's say that 
our goal, we have a goal that, okay, fine. I mean, I have an Amazon FBA business that I can sell for seven figures. For, okay, fine. Now we have at least uh, figured out that what is it that we want to achieve in in next uh, 12 months. So, but I mean, we, we have one sentence right now, but uh, we need to get more data. I mean, we need to get more understanding of what does this sentence actually mean. So step number two is defining how it actually looks like. Okay, so if I want to get $1 million in cash for my business, then it means that I need to have pretty much about a million bucks in annual revenue. I mean, these, these numbers don't need to be exact and these, uh, these are, can be pretty much guesstimates, but we need to have at least some kind of understanding about what do the uh, numbers mean. So if we want to sell our business for a million bucks, uh, then usually it's going to be uh, pretty revenue of pretty much like $1 million. But uh, I mean, th this is just an example. So there are many, when, you, when, when you're selling a business, uh, there are many different factors, but let's not like, at this phase, it, let's not like uh, complicate. Let's just simplify it and just make up at least some numbers, some numbers, so we have at least something to work on. So fine. So one million dollar annual rev revenue. And let's say we are doing like thirty percent in profit. And let's say that we are getting like three and a half more multiple, which means the valuation of business. And um, I mean. Uh, if you get three and a half multiple, multiple, that's not really a good multiple, like right now for an Amazon business. But let's just be really conservative, and because it's better to like uh, underestimate these numbers than overestimate it. So fine. Now, now we have at least some numbers to work on. So the question is that, okay, fine. Is this realistic within twelve months? So. Well, a key question is like, okay, where are we currently? So, I mean, if we are plan making an annual planning, we need to have some understanding also, like what is our current situation? Because it's completely different if we are starting from a scratch or do we have an existing business that we are growing? And what are the, what is basically the one key metric that gets me there that gets me to this goal that I end result that I want to see and then I mean do I have the resources to make it happen and first of all that's a good, good question but is this what I really even want because oftentimes at least for me it might happen that I have these and that kind of goals but when I start like uh, really getting the understanding of what it means in practice, then it might be, I might like consider that. Actually, I don't want to even, I don't want to even do this. So, I mean, this definitely doesn't make sense at all. And, and if you know, if I know what I want um, and what it takes to get there, then am I willing and able to do what is required? Meaning that pay the price, do the work and uh, get the resources that it requires. So key question is, what do I need to get to my destination? So we are talking about resources. So if you are selling like physical products, then we need to have <laughs> some physical products to sell, right? So we need to have inventory. And uh, so to get inventory, we need to have a budget and budget we also need to be spending on uh, other things besides inventory like shipments, advertising, marketing and all kinds of stuff and paying your team and paying yourself. So, but also, okay, do we have any team at use or is it basically just me, myself and I? So if I'm, if I'm the only person uh, that is available for my business, then okay, fine what are the different like professionals that I could use to get to my destination. So maybe I don't have any business partner. Maybe I don't have any team, but uh, who are the people who could actually help me to get to my destination? And in terms of uh, 
selling on Amazon, I mean, or, or re releasing like different kinds of physical products. I mean, there's many different professionals involved in this kind of business. Uh, already like starting from uh, like graphics, graphics designing or like so sourcing different products. So meaning that you have a sourcing agent. Typically, I mean, the time when you get the, when you use sourcing agent, you're going to be getting like lower prices so, and higher margin. So it's good to consider that what are the resources that we have available and also what are the skill set that we have available. So what, what are the skills that I have uh, and what are the skills that any person uh, in my team or around me or who I have, have access to has. So what are the skills that I can uh, utilize to get to my destination? And this is actually an interesting question that I've been thinking um, uh, well, what past some years. So they're saying that, I mean, success, success is who you are. So it's good to consider that who do I have to become to get to my destination? And maybe it's a bit, bit of a weird question, but it actually makes a lot of sense when we start breaking it down that what, what is, does it actually mean? For example, if, I'm, if I have a goal that, um, if I know that I need to uh, like build a team, I need to work with together with my business partner and and so on, then I need to have some kind of like lead, leadership skills. So, okay, if I don't have a team at the moment, I uh, it means that I have to become a leader because how else am I going to be like be able to like manage the team, manage VAs and so on if I don't have any kind of leadership skills. So, okay, to get to my destination, I need to have a team, I need to have uh, become this leader. Then, but let's say that maybe we are not, maybe we have decided for some crazy reason. That, no, 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 we are not going to hire anyone. We are not going to build a team. Which I, which I basically, uh, I mean, I basically always recommend in uh, building a team because otherwise you are going to be doing everything on your own. But then, even even then, we still need to consider that what, what do I need to become in terms of like productivity? So if, if I work only like uh, one hour per day, then I mean, uh, and so I sleep late and basically use that one hour to do some random stuff, then it's going to be pretty difficult to get to my destination. So this means that I, even if I have a limited amount of hours at use, I need to use those hours like really, really, really well. So maybe I understand that in order to get to my destination, I need to become really productive. So then we should consider that what does it mean being productive? First of all, it probably means that whatever is the amount of hours that I have at at my uh, use, then I, I need to be certain that those hours are well spent, basically doing those right things. And in order to become more productive, it really comes down to habits as well. For example, not, not wasting your mornings like snoozing <laughs> five times because it's just going to make you tired and, uh, and so on. And also like if, if, you are, if you are not healthy, then uh, it's going to have negative impact on our plans. So it's, it's going to be harder for us to get to our destination. So we need to take at least some kind of, some kind of consideration about health. Then relationship, meaning that if you have a business partner or if you have teams and so on, you, you need, for example, about your business partner, you need to consider like, okay, uh, where do I need to, like, how do I need to behave in my business relationship so that like both of us or all of us are really of the, of the biggest value for the company. Because even, uh, I mean, it's really common that there are different, uh, for example, disagreements about the pathway or some specific things about the business, but still, if we have such kind of relationship, such kind of business relationship, 
that uh, that is open to like critical discussions and uh, you can like freely discuss about things and have open communication then i mean that will definitely have a huge impact so even uh, let's say that even if your business partner wouldn't uh, be- behave like ideally at least you know that what kind of person i need to have like how, how how do i actually need to behave in order to best serve my plans best serve my getting to my destination and then work life balance because uh, if you're just going to be working next uh, 12 months like crazy then chances are that we are going to we are going to be burned out so how do we avoid in getting uh, ending up being burned out and uh, what are the specific things that we need to do in order to have a healthy work life balance it's funny like Jeff Bezos had the saying that like typically uh, at any job you need to work like uh, uh, hard hard smart <laughs> uh, or long but on amazon you cannot choose to auto free so uh, Jeff Bezos was like uh, really demanding from his team so Basically, there, there's another saying that Amazon is where like A, A grade uh, students go to feel bad about themselves. <laughs> Harvard like uh, graduates. So obviously that's kind of that's kind of working style. It's not healthy in the long term. So it's much better if we like realize that uh, like uh, what kind of work life balance we want to maintain. And if we really care about our destination and if it's if it's really a big enough uh, goal then uh, typically it's not it's it, it is going to require some amount of sacrifices so it's good to consider that which sacrifices am i willing to make so am i willing to sacrifice something out of my current life for example let's say that i spend every night just uh, binging netflix for hours and hours okay I, am i willing to uh, stop doing that or am i willing to start uh, like getting up early or am, am i willing to quit different uh, hobbies or habits or, or whatever the, whatever it is that might be uh, really like uh, uh, that would actually have a positive impact on my on my, not only on my personality bit also on my business so who do i have to become to get to my destination and thing is that i mean the more clear picture you create the easier it will be i mean that's definitely like the case here so here it's fine to go nuts with all sorts of details so i mean the more details you have the easier it will get it, it, the easier it will be to get to our destinations because it's because at that point then we just know so much details about okay fire wind these are the numbers we need to have this these are the team i need to have these are the different skill set i need to have these are the basically different professions i need to be need to have access to for example sourcing agents different like designers or different like uh, help in 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 building an amazon business and so on so the better i mean the better we will be i mean the more the, the more we know but anyway let, let's go proceed to step number three so that's basically the pathway so now we know that where do we want to go and what will what will it actually take to get there so we have some kind of high level plan but that's definitely not not enough we need to get more like granular uh, details so fine we have the numbers i mean fine we have the goal that we want to achieve so we have the destination we have built a clear picture about all the resources that we need to have uh, we have some understanding what what does it mean in terms of numbers and so on but i mean that's not enough we need to have more like uh, uh more much more clear pathway what it actually takes to get to our destination so we have been we have been using these like okrs like objectives and key results for um, many years and it's basically um, 
like the co-founder of uh, Google, Larry Page, saying that, I mean, they have helped Google to, I mean, 10x, like many times over. And the interesting thing is that, I mean, Google started using them, them when, it, when it was just like handful of employees and they are basically still using those uh, to this date, which means I don't know how many employees Google has like currently. So, I mean, this is definitely like scalable system. So we need to know where, where we want to go. I mean, how to get there, but we need to have some kind of support system that will help us get there. So objectives and key results. So it's a goal setting framework that helps define goals and track the outcome. So it basically helps to establish these far reaching goals in days instead of months. So objective means that what I want to have accomplished. So it's, it's, it's not, it shouldn't be any kind of numeric. For example, if you're saying that, hey, hey, I want to have money, $1 million revenue. I mean, is that really inspiring you? I mean, maybe it is inspiring, but inspiring you, but I mean, it should be something, something more. It should be something that gives you some kind of uh, meaning. It, it gives you reason to get out of bed every morning. It, that's that's a good kind of objective. So, it, objective should be something that gives us the reason to wake up every single morning, morning and get to work. Then key result means that how am I going to get it done? So that means here we need have we need the specifics. So it has to be measurable and it has to have numbers and all so and usually when we have the annual plan some i mean some kind of annual target it actually makes sense in this case to start going from the end uh, start going from the end to backwards for example let's say that uh, okay earlier i defined that i want to have a business that i can send sell for a million bucks okay fine then let's actually do like uh, o o these objectives for quarter, every quarter. So that means every 90 days uh, we will have an objective. So when we, are, when, when we have a 12 month period, then it means that on the last quarter, uh, the, the fourth quarter, we have the, basically the last objective. So then it means that, okay, then our objective could be that uh, I have an Amazon FBA business that I can sell for seven figures. And uh, I mean, that, that, that can be pretty inspiring and motivating, motivating to do. So, but how do we actually know where, where, when we get there? So then we need to define some numerics. So key results have come place in here. So key results could be that I have an offer for my buyer to buy my business for one million dollar bucks. One million bucks. And uh, here it actually makes sense that you don't go crazy with adding like tens and tens of key results. I mean, it basically means that if, if the key result is true, then uh, or if all key results are true, then the objective must be true as well. So that's a good way to think about it. But let, let's use this uh, example. Okay, if that, for the last quarter, we have uh, objective that I have an Amazon FBA business that I can sell for seven figures. Okay, let's go back another like 90 days. What could be the objective? Well, it could be that, okay, my products are crossing the marketplace. And how do I know? Where, w w I mean, what does crossing mean and uh, all that stuff? So maybe it means that I have ranked each product to top three on the main keywords on the marketplace that I'm selling those and zip all units for rest of the year. And here, the last one makes sense in the, in the point that if, if, you have to, if, if we are talking about calendar year, then the last quarter starts on October. So at that time, we should already have inventory um, in, in place for the for, for the holidays. Then let's back up again. What could be our second uh, objective? So it could be that, okay, fine. I have a products 
and a team to support me. So this could be that, okay, what, what does this mean? How do I know when it's true? It's true when I have virtual assistants growing my Amazon business and we have shipped X amount of products to US, Canada and European Amazon uh, marketplaces. And let's do like uh, back up another 90 days. Then the objective could be that, okay, fine. I have this goal of building, uh, having a, selling my business for 1 million bucks. But I mean, if, if I st start, if I am starting from scratch, then I need to have some kind of, uh, I actually need to do a lot of research. So the first 90 days, I'm probably going to be spending in doing research and figuring out different things and figuring out what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the year, rest of the year. So this means that for the first 90 days, I'm going to be spending on really mapping out this pathway, pathway and getting out those resources and uh, all that stuff for the rest of the year. So that means that key result could be that I have business plan and set up for a million dollar valuation based on buyer expectations. And if I define it like this, then, then it means that I need to figure out these uh, buyer expectations. So if I'm starting from a class here, we can see that the first thing is to actually start doing different kind of uh, uh, re research. So if it's January, like today, then this would basically be my first objective. So I have some kind of pathway to build a million dollar brand, then I have a business plan and set up for a million dollar valuation based on buyer expectation. So once we have done this, basically just like figure out this, uh, basically four objectives and key results for them. Then, I mean, step number four will be then tracking. Because as soon as we have this, as, I mean, basically as soon as we have uh, the first objective, and uh, key result done. I mean, we can always start working on this, right? But uh, it's not really, it's not, I mean, uh, sure. I mean, you can work with such a like high goal, but I mean, uh, let, let's say if we only have the nine, if, if we only have an like 90 day goal and uh, key result for that, it's not going to guide us that well because we, we should, do some kind of tracking, making sure that we are on the, on, on the right path. So that's why step number four is about uh, tracking and really getting, making sure that we will get to our destination. So what, what, what are the things that we need to do weekly? First of all, I mean, planning, review, retrospect, re re retrospective based on the week. So that means that Objective is always the, like the high high level high level planning, but in order to make uh, use the, mo the most use out of every single month out of every single quarter, we need to have much more like uh, details on on our plan. It also applies to uh, OKRs. I mean, OKRs are not cast in stone either. Because if, 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 if we realize that, ah, uh, I mean, whatever I planned last month, it doesn't really make sense anymore. So then you need to like refine those. You, you shouldn't refine like in the middle of a quarter unless you have like significantly changed your plan, but you should definitely like refine after you have finished the quarter because uh, as, as soon as we complete one quarter, then we are going to be like doing the planning for the next quarter. And at that point, is the, that's the right time to do changes on, on the next uh, quarter objectives, if, if, if there's a need. So is this really this continuous improvement cycle of like planning, executing review and identify the things that you need to do? So there are thing, things that we need to do every 90 days so basically after March we need to review these uh, past uh, OKRs and then we assign different scores to those or then basically mark those done 
So I mean, that, that, that's, I'm not going to be going into details of these uh, objectives because I mean, there's so many ways how to do this and we can uh, check it out. But the, the one way is to do is that, is that first of all, you have like a true false statement, meaning that the objective is either true or false. Or then you have some kind of like a scoring system where like uh, in order to pass, it has to meet a certain uh, score. So there's many ways to do this, but that's basically one way. So you, we review the past OKRs and then we plan the upcoming uh, OKR, OKRs. Then basically do the retro retrospective based on the quarter so that we are able to identify the things that we need to improve on the next quarter as well as like really like uh, amplify the th amplify the things that are working for example if we identify that hey we really i mean this kind of like advertising campaign did we really well or maybe we use some some kind of influencers that that worked out really well for our products then i mean we should definitely amplify those uh, results in, in the next uh, quarter. So, I mean, just do more of the things that are actually working. So, the, I mean, uh, the, because 12 months is such a limited amount of time, then we need to use, we really need to make it count. And uh, we don't want to waste any time. So it's especially true in that, uh, that case to really amplify the things that are working. So, and then, I mean, every quarterly, we, after the quarter is completed, we modify the annual plan if needed. So let, let's take an example. So maybe week one is that uh, basically planning, you, we break down the quarter to weeks. We have daily synchro synchronization with the team, or if it's just like, uh, if it's just you and your, me and my business partner are fine, then I do it my, with my business partner. Or well, let's say that I don't have anyone, I'm basically working alone in my business. Then, I mean, two things, you, you should definitely get a VA as soon as possible. But number two is that you should have some kind of accountability body that you can, uh, uh, you can like make, make use of. Then review if everything was done as expected after the week, then retrospective to find the things to improve next week and then modify the plan if needed. I, I, I sound like a broken record, but think, I mean, no plan is cast in stone. So point is, uh, to, it's, it's about planning. It's not about the plan itself. But when, when we are doing this basically week by week, then here specificity, this specificity is really the key thing because uh, it's so easy to do plans that, or it's so easy to do goals that make no sense. So we, re we really need to get specific. So let's say that, okay, quarter one, I have this pathway to build a million dollar brand. And then key result is that, okay, I have a business plan and set up for a million dollar valuation based on buyer expectation. So this is, this doesn't really need any numer numerical value. It's basically a true false statement so it's either done or not done. So it's binary. And key thing is that about the annual plan that it, it must always fit one slide. Because if it's if it's longer than that, then I mean you're going to be, it's too easy to lose focus and it's just too easy to basically get uh, not doing the right things and uh, uh, start adding too many things that we are, don't have, don't have, don't make big enough impact for the end result. Because the point is to get to our destination. So we should like disregard everything that will, that's not getting us closer to our destination. Because as we saw previously, we basically have only like less than thousand hours to, to get this done. So end result, I have an Amazon FBA business that I can sell for seven figures. So in terms of numbers, it could mean, for example, that one million dollars in annual revenue and thirty percent profit margin, and with the three and a half multiple. Then, for the first quarter, I have a bad way to build a million dollar brand. The key result could be I have a business plan and set up for a million dollar valuation based on buyer expectations. And here, 
I mean, in the annual pl plan itself, we don't, we shouldn't add all those details because let's take, for example, this first quarter here. I mean, we are going to be working on this for the next 90 days. So if, if you are starting in January, then uh, we're going to be uh, like working on, on this until end of March. So that means that during this, uh, during that 90 days, we are going to be making quite a, quite a, quite a bit of like weekly goals and basically more granular plan. There, so, I mean, th that's the time we are going to be doing it. It doesn't make any sense that uh, we would may start making like annual plan where we are already like planning that some specific things or some detailed things that we are going to be doing in uh, November, if it's January right now, unless it's some time basis, time based things. Then second quarter, I have products and team to support me. Key results could be, I have virtual assistants to help me grow my Amazon business and ship X amount of products to US, Canada, European marketplaces. Quarter number three, my products are crossing the marketplace. And I have ranked each product to top three on the main keywords on every marketplace that I'm selling and ship all units for the rest of the year. Then the final quarter, of this 12 month uh, annual plan would be that I have an Amazon FBA business that I can sell for seven figures, which means that I have an offer from a buyer to buy my business for uh, $1 million. So this is important thing that I mean, different, I mean, finance or forecast are something that we should be doing in any case. So, I mean, putting those as uh, key results it's actually, actually, it's not such a good thing because it might lead to us turning blind eye to other important things. And having, I mean, trust me on this, having too many key results really disrupts the focus. So less is more. We have done it so many times that like within our team, within, within our company, we have had like so many different ob objectives and key results. And I, I can tell you that like every time the result has been the same. So it may, let's say that if we have like five different OKRs, then I mean, majority of those will not be done. So thing here is that it has to fit one slide and you it doesn't make sense to add like too much details here. And yeah, I mean, time goes fast. Let's not overestimate what we can do in one year because uh, on our personal time it's just it can be just less than thousand hours and it is not about the plan point is to point is to get the right stuff done that's basically the only reason that we are doing this annual planning the annual planning is not the goal itself the, i mean the goal itself that we want to get to our destination we have some kind of reason some kind of purpose that we want to achieve so that, that, that's the whole point. So this is just another tool that will help us get there. And so planning really helps focusing on, on the right things 24 seven. And then it's just basically rinse and repeat. So every nine day, 90 days, well actually every week, it's about reflecting, reflecting on, uh, on the, first, first of all, uh, like the goals, and then every 90 days you reflect on the OKRs and then annual plans.